but we're still on the least of these. And I don't want you to forget the least. So every, I, I, I need to, I wish I could bring a cake, an upside down cake, pineapple cake each week, but that's not practical. So I may take a picture of one and <laughs> have it as my fan. So you guys won't forget the least of these because we'll be going to another quarter and a different subject. But we always want to remember the least of these. I want to keep that on your mind around the year, OK? So if I say upside down cake, or if I say Jesus had an upside down kingdom, you know what I'm talking about where the cake is turned upside down the flat side is where on top and the uh, pineapples are on top so they won't slide off and so the pineapple represents the least of these the poor okay and if the, if the cake was right side up they would just slide down and be forgotten so Jesus as we learned in a lesson, had an upside down ministry, upside down kingdom, where the rich are on the bottom and the poor are on the top. And that was, uh, his emphasis was on helping people in need, our neighbors. There's a, there's a text that I want you all to remember when, when we're trying to help people, okay? And it's found in Psalms. What book did I say? Psalms 112 and verse, give me five. That's how you remember the verse. <laughs> All right? Give me five. So somebody look at that. I want you to read that out loud. Psalms 112, verse what? Five. five. See, you remember the five. Psalms is probably in the middle of your Bible. Why Ecclesiastics, Proverbs, over in that area. Psalms 1, because we're going to be referring back to this text, because it's the whole lesson's about this text. The whole lesson's about, uh, really, the quarter is about this text, about giving and how we should give. Giving is not always money. Remember his mark, marvelous. Oh, I can't read it. All right, he's got it over here. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. kind of man gives a good man so are we all supposed to be good yes and goodness comes from God but what's the key word in this text starts with a D discretion you're to give not grudgingly uh, or nor of necessity necessity but God what's once what kind of giver cheerful giver but with what discretion and we'll talk about that as we talk about the lesson but I want you to remember what's the what's the book Psalms which is a division 112 verse 5 so you got that memorized all right so the lesson talks about reconciliation and anybody knows what reconciliation is? To come together, to make even? Okay. Um, it also talks about, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, about the wars that are going on, families are warring against each other. But I want you all to think of, and it talks about this in the lesson, about obeying God rather than man obeying God's laws. What civil law, what civil law were that we shouldn't obey? 
Don't answer that yet, but if you think of one, let me know. Is there any civil law that we're not to obey? Is there any civil law that conflicts with God's law? And you may not think of one. All right. So uh, we were talking about reconciliation, which is part of the, the lesson. Uh, so it says in the question for the church, what ways, what are the ways that your church, this church, at this local level could act in a role of a peacemaker? We know about the wars that are going on. There's maybe nothing we can do about the wars in the Mideast, but is there something that we could do in Tulsa as a church to be a peacemaker? Anything we could do or just sit by and watch? Sit on the pew like I'm sitting now. Is there anything that we can do as a church? Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. What would help the church if we see everybody equal? Because the Lord taught me where there is not equality for all, the only thing we have in our heart is iniquity. Discretion is wonderful, but don't let it be our excuse. Everybody's equal. So we, if the appeal comes or we see a situation, everybody's on the what? Same level. Don't judge a man by what he drives or how he dresses, but everybody's on the same equal level. Anything else that the church can do? It's silent. That means the church can't do anything. Or you guys get some feedback what the church or we just sit here and just come to church all right here's a hand back here we can try outreach like uh, the darkest and God's closet okay. good outreach there's plenty to do you can set up a tent have a health fair can help the school kids. There's plenty to do. Who are our neighbors? Anybody in need that's around us? And it happens all the time. So there's plenty of things we can do. Suggest things to the pastor to put in the budget. We need to do this and this and that. Now, um, sometimes when we're helping people, we get tired fatigue sets in. What, are, what does the lessons tell us to do when that happens? There's so many things happening to our loved ones. They get sick. We see wars and we see conflict and we see all these things happening uh, around us. We see uh, over in the third world countries, the undeveloped countries that some have a one in three chance to live to be 65. What are we? And then this tires us out, tires our mind. What does the lesson say about when we become fatigued? Does the lesson say anything? Or when do you get tired of all this happening? What do you do? You pray. OK. That was one of the answers in here, is to pray about it. It says that we aren't to jump to everything situation we're to pray to God for what wisdom guidance so everything that's happening that shouldn't happen the the people are being treated unjustly we're not just supposed to jump out and help so we need to pray about some things for guidance what else it starts with an E to educate ourselves read there are disparities in our neighborhoods some zip codes have uh, 
worse health care. They're sicker than some other zip codes. Why is that? So we need to read and study uh, what's going on. Many situations of injustice and poverty are complicated, remember? Complicated. Listening and learning. We should listen to what's going on and learn. Keep your minds occupied. Don't just soak things up and, and let it go by. Educate yourself. What else? So we have prayer, we have education, and the other thing starts with a C in Monday's lesson. Compassion. What does that mean? Compassion. And um, I'm going to do a text here on my phone and you'll see what how you should endure and I got the Bible here and I'm gonna it's in first Corinthians and I'm gonna put the word love and then I'm gonna search and I'm gonna go to first Corinthians for those that of you are good with the phone and we're going to go to 15. Therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast. Stead what? And love starts that. Unmovable so when you're tired, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always. Don't give up. Don't get tired. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. So persevere. And the only way you can do that is through that L word, which is love. Love keeps us going. It kept Christ going. I'm sure he had uh, conflicts and people were trying to kill him and all these things, but he persevered and went through it all because he loved. And we should have that same thing. Now, I know we're going to talk about danger in witnessing, danger in caregiving, danger in helping others. Yes. It is there. And what are we to do when there's danger? Pray. Anything else? Remember our, our text, Psalms what? 112 verse? It said the key word was what? Discretion. Now, uh, if you lived in L.A. or Chicago or New York, and I've been for a little part in Tulsa, there are gangs. And we talk about Tulsa having a uh, homicide of about 45 to 55, 65 for the year. And they can do that in a month. There can be 20 or 30 people shot in Chicago. If you read the news, a weekend, shot and killed. So do you go, and when there's danger, do you go with a white flag and there are bullets flying? Do you go with a white flag and say, hey, stop this. Stop. You, God says thou shalt not kill. Do we do that? How do we handle that? Go ahead. And the lesson says, go ahead. As I said, I meet people you all overlook as a street preacher. The church try to avoid, you know, situation when God wants us to really to embrace them. Uh, God had me to stop a dice game one day at a park. And the young man gun fell out. I didn't fear that because I know that's where God called me to. Paul tells us to abide in where we're called. 
That's got to be your calling. Don't, if God did not call you to that, please don't do that. If I may say this, Brother Bruce, I was downtown the other day. My, my um, alternator went out of my car, so I had to catch the bus. And just so happened, I saw some young ladies downtown. They, they were witnessing and everything. And I'm just sitting there just looking, looking to see what's going on. So this young lady was so anxious to witness to these guys. And I'm just like, Lord, let her not go there. She don't realize the danger. So she's trying to pray with the guys and everything. So the guys is trying to ask her out to dinner. And I told the young lady, I said, hey, come here for a minute. I said, I don't know you and you don't know me. But the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, with all thy getting, get understanding. Don't go here because you feel like your church wants you out here. You go here because God led you here. We got to be careful. We got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Yes, that's where that discretion comes in. So, you know, there are situations we don't jump out to every situation. We're to have a, a willing heart to give, like the text says, but we ha should have discretion. And God gives us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But love does protect, too. If you're doing it for God, love does protect you. So Jesus did things. Sometimes people want to kill him, but he had a connection with his father who protected him. We have that same connection. So yes, there's danger out there, but if you do it for Christ, sometimes you lose your life, but you gain eternal life. Now I'm saying go, don't go out there silly though, <laughs> but with discretion, all right? You can't, you can't stop a bullet. Okay, even, even though. Now going back to fatigue, I was in the uh, service and I never ran track, but uh, I ran track in the Army. And uh, I ran the 440, and I was the anchor man for the mile relay. And what the coach tells you to do when you're running, sometimes you coast. You don't give it all. You coast, and then you kick. They call that kick. You run your fastest at the end. And uh, that's how we won the mile relay. I was an anchor man, and I started coasting the first one. I first started off, but then I kicked at the end. We're living in the end of time. So sometimes we have to kick. We have to push. We have to give it our all. And the servant of the Lord says, more is going to be required of us at the end of time. So yes we come to church yes we drive cars yes we have homes some of us have money some of us don't but God wants us to kick at the end and then the youth had and you got to be careful though the youth had uh, an Olympics Southwest Region Conference youth had an Olympics on Sunday uh, during the summer so here I am they, they wanted the, those that are over 40 to run a race. I don't know if it's 40 or 50. Well, anyway, I decided I hadn't trained or anything. These guys were out in their shorts and their, their T-shirts, and they were ready for that. I said, well, you know, I'll run. I can still run. So my daughters were there. They were the youth, part of the youth crowd. And uh, they kind of said, well, be careful now. So I ran the race, and I beat all the guys over 40. <laughs> the next year, the same uh, Olympics was being held. And so my daughter's, yeah, Dad, go ahead and run. I hadn't trained. I hadn't done anything. So yeah, I'll, I'll run this race. So when I uh, ran, I was doing well, and then my legs gave up. I fell and tumbled over. So sometimes, yes, our legs do give out. Sometimes we get older and, and things happen and we're not as young as we used to be, but God still wants to use us. He wants to, us to maybe pray about something. Uh, our wisdom, as we grow older, our knowledge, our, our years of experience will be good for the young people. 
good for new people when they come into this church. So you still use your skills, your talents, and everybody has time. Everybody has time. Everybody doesn't have the treasury, uh, a certain talent, but we all have time. Okay? I just thought I'd throw that little illustration in there, running the race to be steadfast. And I thought I was steadfast, but if I failed that last week. Okay, uh, what does God say about, we talked about danger, we talked um, reconciliation, did we talk about that? Okay, I mentioned it. Blessed are the what? Starts with a P. Peacemakers. I heard it, somebody said. Uh, are you being a peacemaker? Can we be peacemakers? Yes. We can. Uh, in what ways? Compromising. Compromising. Um, I can't think. How can we be peacemakers with families that are having trouble? Can we? We have to start with ourselves first. Some of us, we are not peaceful with ourselves. So we have to first start with ourselves. And then with our families, we, we have to pray. To do all of these, we have to put on the whole arm of God. So we have to pray about this, and so we'll be able to assist our family. To be peaceful or to have peace with the family, we, as I said before, we have to have peace with ourselves, and so then we'll be able to assist or share with our family. And, and so, if, for example, sometimes they might say some things that aggravate our spirit or we are not pleased with, but we go to God and we do not go to them. The, the, the saying is that you do not use fire with fire. So, right, yeah. so you go peacefully and help to quell whatever is happening. Very key to be peacefully. We can't go there and stir the what? Stir the pot. You know how some people can stir the pot? Uh, we aren't to be like that. We're to be peaceful as we go. Pray to God. Pray that the Spirit will lead you and angels will follow you. Be with at your side, especially with families. Now, some of the people in the police department, that's one of the things they hate to go <laughs> to a, a domestic abuse to that house because they don't know what they're going to get into. The husband and wife are fighting, and they have to go there and try to break it up, you know, if they hear that somebody's shooting or whatever. But we're to be the peacemakers for they what? What will they do? What did that? text say about peacemakers? Well, what? I can't hear you. Peacemakers are what? Go ahead. Yeah, they will be called the children of God. Okay, be called the children of God, and that's what we want, okay? So we want to be peacemakers. Uh, do we need peacemakers on the street? Yes. In wartime? Yes. What about a church? Especially a church, huh? All right. So you guys, that's your mission, to be a peacemaker. Don't always take sides. Kind of be in the middle. Let's pray about it. Be a peacemaker. And the to the question, if you can be merciful, you can be understanding, you could be compassionate to others. Pretty much that. All right. Okay. Uh, so has anybody come up with a, a law yet that we're not supposed to obey? Any law, any civil law. Here's one back here. Remember the lesson talks about, you know, back in slavery time, man... Even in Egypt, they own other men. But the servant of the Lord says, we're not to do that. We're bought with a price by God. And no man owns another man. 
Now that's all in the past. Hopefully it's not happening today. But <laughs> when you say about civil law, I, my mind goes to shedding innocent blood. Thou shalt not shed innocent blood. And we always want to equate innocent blood with abortions. But if we're sitting here serving God and a gunman walk in, we're innocent too. So I believe an abortion is included, but it should not be the only thing. The Bible said thou should not shed innocent blood. Innocent blood. You know, a lady just walked away with murder. She killed her baby. But then we'll say, oh, it's okay. You know, she, she wasn't trying to do it. But that was an innocent child. So we just can't limit it to abortions only. All right. So there, there may be a law that we're not supposed to obey, that it's on the books, the okay to do. But if it conflicts with the Ten Commandments, say we don't, we're to, uh, we must obey God rather than a human beings. Um, dealing with those in power, they in power. So, what was our text? Psalms what? Oh, y'all got that memorized. Good. So I want y'all to go home and read that when you're trying to make a decision. And the key word there is what? Discretion. You handle things with discretion. And some of the ways we do that, through prayer, through education, and the lesson talks about that. Compassion. Fasting. So there are di different ways to deal with it. And God always gives us a way that we can deal with these situations. Okay? I was in the Army again. And on the weekend, we had what we call alerts. On the weekends, SDAs, they called us. Uh, we had our, our Sabbaths off Friday night. And we didn't come back to the barracks until Sunday. Uh, so we every weekend we had off but sometimes when there's an alert they sound the alarm it's like a fire drill you go put your fatigues on and you go out in the field and you kind of play soldier like it's a real alert you know like you go out for the fire drill and think it's a pretend it's a real fire they called uh, we had an alert on Sabbath morning in our, and all the sar the sergeants came in there. Get, get, it's time to go out the field. Got time to, and we had five or six, seven day Adventists in the barracks at four floors, and they all came down to my uh, floor. What shall we do? What shall we do? Should we go out there? I says no. We're supposed to go to church today. We're supposed to obey, obey God rather than man, so we don't play soldier on the Sabbath. So <laughs> I said, well, no, we need to go to church. So they were running around, the, the other uh, soldiers getting the fatigues on and, and all that, and they were getting their tents and backpacks and getting ready while we're just sitting there. I says, let's keep our civilian clothes on and go to church. So we went to church that day. We disobeyed them. So the next day, they were angry with us, and they, they, we got KP. Y'all know what KP is? Kitchen police. <laughs> they wanted to punish us. So when they came Sunday morning, as we were back, I hid behind my wall locker so they didn't catch me. Our wall lockers are real tall. <laughs> I hid behind them. The other guys, they caught them and made them do kitchen police. So we as a group, we said, we're going to go see the inspecting general. We shouldn't have to be treated like this. So we went to see the inspecting general. We couldn't see him. His assistant was there. And he says, yes, you guys should have went out in the field. You should have went with the other group. And, and then we went to our Seventh-day Adventist chaplain. And he says, no, there is a rule that they don't bother your religion. <laughs> 
So we were happy then because we, we didn't have to have KP anymore. So they left us alone on Sabbath. Now some, some people abused it, some SDAs, but for the most part, we were in church on Sabbath. Uh, so sometimes we need to obey God rather than man. Take our stand, be steadfast, unmovable. <laughs> okay? Um, yes, question. Yes. My question is, first of all, it's a statement. In them. I respect people, Christians, doctrines, beliefs, but I also understand if an emergency arrives on the Sabbath and you have a loved one, do we worship the Sabbath or do we worship God? Yes. I'm asking the question because I think our worship should be to God and not a day because sometimes we take it too far and we'll make that this is a day that if we do anything other than this or that we're going to hell we have to be so careful that we don't worship the creation and not the creator so So it depends. Sometimes it depends. It's lawful, like you said, to do good on the what? Sabbath. Sabbath. It's lawful. So your child gets sick, you say, oh, Sabbath, I can't take him to the doctor. I can't get any medicine because I'm buying. No, it's, remember our text is what? Psalms what? 112 verse what? Five. Five. It says do it in what? With what? Discretion. So that's the whole key. The whole key to this quarter, do it with discretion. Give cheerfully of your time, your money, your talents. Give cheerfully. A liberal hand shall be made fat. Give cheerfully, but with what? Discretion, with prayer and understanding. And there are some countries, and I've got to close, that uh, if you give money, you see these little kids starving on TV. There are some countries, some evil countries, that if you send money, who's going to get the money? Those people on top. They get richer. And you make the poor poor when you, when you do. So give with discretion. That's the key. We're going to keep this alive. Next Sabbath is, is still uh, talking about the least of these. So let me close with this. Remember, it's nice to be somebody, and you're all somebody, but it's better to be somebody nice. Remember that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, okay, don't forget the least of these. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this lesson, for opening up our understanding. We pray that you will give us a song, Lord, that will cheer us by the way as we do your work. And as these stormy winds, when they've passed by, all this trouble, when it's gone, and when you come again, let's remember the words of the song. In a little while, we'll be going home. We ask these favors 
In Jesus' name, amen.